Today, we're going to see how to create amazing anime art of your favorite anime characters. In this video, we're also going to learn about Loras in painting, as well as upscalers. If you are new to Stable Diffusion, please check my previous video where I give a detailed explanation regarding each setting of the web UI. It is also divided into time codes. All right, let's get into it. So first off, there are models, and then there are Loras. Models are what we use to generate art related to specific niche, like fantasy, anime, or real realistic art, but Loras are what we use to generate a specific character or for the art to have a specific style. So there are three models I usually create anime art in. The first is Anything V5, the second is Minamix, and the third model I've found recently is Break Domain. Break Domain is really good at creating complex artwork or artwork with a specific aesthetic. Check the model page on Civit AI and you'll find a lot of good artwork generated with this one. Now let's pick an anime character, hmm, how about someone a bit under rated, but also pretty popular within that particular fandom. All right, let's pick Eris from Mishoku Tensai. Nope, not her angry brat version, her adult version. Everyone who has read the Mishoku Tensai light novels knows adult Eris looks like this. So let's try to replicate this art, add our own effects, and do something like this. All right, let's load the web UI. Now this is the starting interface, and now I'm going to prepare the settings and get ready for the image generation. First, I'm going to load the negative prompts and paste them here. Don't be scared. These are going to be included in the description. Let's set the sampler to Euler A. Let me set the sampling steps to 35 since that works best for me. Width and height is 512 and 768 respectively since I need a portrait image. CFG scale is going to be 7 and we aren't going to tick any of the checkboxes. Now let's get started. I'm going to go and paste a prompt to generate adult errors here. Before hitting generate, let me speak the style of this prompt. If you look at it closely, you could see I've included some complementary words like best quality, high I res in the beginning, and then the name of my character, then details about her, such as her clothing, hairstyle, etc. It's much easier to organize your prompt and even get more accurate results if you follow this format. Like I said in my previous videos, it's even easier if you explain your character from top to bottom as well. All right, let's hit generate. Wait a few seconds. Huh. Now this has followed our prompt closely, but it doesn't look like adult heiress at all. Now this is where Loris came into play. See, these models have been trained by anime art, but it might not be able to generate all the characters you want. Sure, I can type a prompt about a popular anime character like Saber and get a closer result, but I cannot do the same thing for a lot of other characters. This is why I specifically picked a character like Eris. Enough talk. What's the solution for this? Simple. We go to Civit AI and check if we have a Laura of adult Eris. Lauras are trained using a specific character or art style, so we can generate that character via our model. Now this Laura of adult Eris is something I really like. I've used it a few times and it gave me some amazing results. Huge props to the Laura creator for training this really well. Downloading the Laura is very easy. Hit the download button and download the file. Now go to the Stable Diffusion Web UI install directory. Go to the models folder, go to Laura, and paste this right here. Now you can hit the Laura button in the web UI. Refresh the list. See your Laura right here. Now there's a thing you should keep in mind. Each Laura has a trigger word, and you need to use that particular keyword to trigger that Laura during the art generation. You can find it right here. In this case, it's adult heiress. All right, let me readjust my prompt and paste it right here. Here's our trigger word. And now it's just a matter of using the Laura. To do this, I simply go back to Laura tab and click on the Laura and you'll see a new keyword was added to the prompt. Hit generate and boom, we've got a nice art of heiress. Now you can see her face looks very close to heiress. While we're at it, I need to speak about Laura weights. In Stable Diffusion, each keyword has a weight and so does Laura's. In the Laura page, the creator will most probably provide the ideal Laura weights for the model. Setting the Laura weight to really low could make your image very different from the character, and sometimes setting it too high can have its issues too. So let me try something like 0.8 and hit generate. All right, this looks good, but as usual, her eyes need adjustment. If you followed my previous tutorials, you know what trick I'm going to use. Hit our favorite hire stop fix button, set the steps to 10. Ideally, you could also keep this to exactly half the number of the original steps, but 10 works for me. Choose the upscaler as the R Surgeon anime one, since that's what works best for anime and hit generate. Hires.fix improves the art during the generation by upscaling it, and this also helps to remove any blurriness between eyes or any missing body parts. Wow, look at that. We got what we want and the eyes are really nice, but I still want her face to be a bit more heiress like so set the weights to one. Hit generate, wait a few millennia, and there you go. Now this is perfect. We've got the perfect face, all the other details are correct, and her dress matches her adult form as well. Now it's time for some 
some in painting. All right, let's say I don't like her exposed midriff and I want to take this art from PG-13 to PG. One way we could do this is by messing around the prompt, but since Loras are trained on specific clothing styles, this can be really hard. Or we could be smart and use in painting and save a lot of time. To prove my point, let me click the send to in paint button right here. Now we're in the in paint window. If you've used Photoshop, then these brushes and all will be very familiar. But if you haven't, let me explain. This black dot allows you to draw anywhere you need. The slider is what allows you to make the size of the brush big or small. The eraser erases and the undo button undoes any changes. Those should be obvious. Now, since I want to cover her midriff, I'm going to draw around her midriff and remove this whole prompt. Here we need to write what should be painted within the area we selected. Keep this in mind. So here we just need a white dress. And now I hit generate. Look at that. We got this nice blouse-like dress to cover up her midriff, and it also knew exactly where to start and end the design, and how it should not create a full dress and only paint that particular part. That's the power of AI. Below this in-painting, you could also see some settings. The mask blur determines how much padding there should be among the pixels. For example, I tried to give Eris some sunglasses to make her look like a 21st century Eris. This is when mask blur was set to 4, and this is when it's set to 2. You can see when it's set to 4, it also paints some area outside the sun glasses, and this when it's two, it stops somewhere here. So it's best to play around this value and find something that matches what you need. Below it, we also got an option to in-paint the whole picture or just the area we want. And just like text to image, we have samplers, sampling steps here as well. Now there's one thing to keep in mind. This might be a bug in in-paint, or it might be something intended, but let's say I want a plant right here. All right, I paint that area. Type plants and then hit generate. Okay, we got a plant here and on her midriff. If you're wondering why, that's because we had previously selected her midriff area and that selection is still there if you undo it. So in paint painted over both her midriff and the new place we selected. So it's best to always undo or erase any previous selections before making a new selection. Let me erase that, select this place again, and boom, now it works. Now let's show the true power of in painting. What if I want to keep the face and her jacket the same and want to change her top? All right, let's do it. Boom, here we go. Now you can see her dress is totally different from before. All I did was to select that entire area. Type these keywords on the prompt box and then we got the result we needed. Did you realize the power of in-painting now? Hmm, she's still missing her abs. Pretty simple. I select the new area. I type abs, hit generate, and there you go. Now we've got adult heiress with abs. You can see how in-paint nicely blended the new drawing with the old one. Okay, that's enough in-painting for one day. Let me finish off by explaining the last process of my workflow, upscaling. To upscale, you can click the send to extras button right here. It is available in both image to image tabs and text to image tabs. Clicking this will send your artwork to the extras tab and here you can upscale it using a particular upscaler. There are various upscalers available based on the way you upscale it, but the best one that works for anime is the RS Grin 4X Plus Anime 6B upscaler. Click on it and in this resize box you could specify what scale you need to upscale it in. Since we already have it in a 512 to 768 resolution, multiplying it by 4 means we're literally going for a 2K resolution. It generate and there you go some nice quality artwork of eris ready for publishing and that is the end of this video i hope you gained some knowledge especially about laura's in painting and upscaling this is my workflow for generating amazing anime art feel free to check out other laura's try out other models and ask any questions you have down below in the comments as usual like and subscribe to our growing community that's it for today ai gang and i'll see you all in the next video